I hope you've enjoyed the thoughts for the day over the past eight months or so that we've been running them. And we're really enormously grateful to all of those who have contributed to them, particularly uh, Robert, who's um, produced loads and loads of them, but everybody who's contributed to our thoughts for the day. We're so grateful and it's just been a really fantastic thing. And I think many of you from comments we've received have found them really helpful. Anyway, at this point, we feel that it's uh, right, just for now at least, to put a, a, a halt on the thoughts for the day. Um, and we're going to put energies into other things. And we feel they've just sort of run their natural course. So today's thought for the day, which is number 140. That's pretty impressive, isn't it? Uh, on its own, isn't it? 140 thoughts for the day have been posted up. Anyway, this is going to be the last one, certainly for the time being. It may be that we reinstate them in the future, but for now, this is uh, the last thought for the day, and I'm going to hand over to Robert again, uh, who's going to bring it to us. I want to take us today to three verses in the book of Deuteronomy, which made quite an impression on me recently. They were written for God's Old Testament people well over 3,000 years ago, as they made their way to the promised land of Canaan. But they speak very much to us today as God's New Testament people, as we make our journey through life with our sights set on heaven to come. As he nears the end of his life, Moses focuses on a concern which he knew was on the hearts of the people of Israel, who were very soon to cross the River Jordan and enter the Promised Land. And this concern was to do with the Canaanite peoples who occupied the land. The three verses for today are Deuteronomy chapter 7, verses 17 to 19. Moses says to the people of Israel, If you say in your heart, These nations are greater than I, how can I dispossess them? You shall not be afraid of them, but you shall remember what the Lord your God did to Pharaoh and to all Egypt, the great trials that your eyes saw, the signs, the wonders, the mighty hand and the outstretched arm by which the Lord your God brought you out. So will the Lord your God do to all the peoples of whom you are afraid. Let's notice three things in particular about Moses' words in these verses. The first is to do with the human heart. The other two are to do with God. First, he says to them, identify your worries in the present. If you say in your heart, these nations are greater than I, how can I dispossess them? Well, that little word if at the beginning is interesting because it can also mean when. In fact, although our Bible version has chosen to go with if, it wouldn't be incorrect if it had decided instead to say when. The point is, this is not a remote possibility. This is exactly what the people are going to be thinking in the time to come, not to mention right then at that moment. These nations are greater, more numerous than I. How can I dispossess them? We too need to identify the worries and fears we have for our ongoing Christian lives, such as how will I keep going on as a Christian when there are so many pressures on me day by day, all those temptations and doubts and discouragements, will I finally get to heaven? Let's be sure that the Lord knows our hearts, nothing is hidden from him, so we can be totally honest with him about our spiritual fears. Jesus is our merciful and faithful high priest and we are assured that because he himself has suffered when tempted, he is able to help those who are being tempted. Hebrews chapter 2 verses 17 and 18. Here's the second thing that Moses has to say. Remember what God has done in the past. Moses says to the people, you shall remember what the Lord your God did to Pharaoh and to all Egypt, the great trials that your eyes saw, the signs, the wonders, the mighty hand and the outstretched arms by which the Lord your God brought you out. The command to remember is a strong one, 
what the Hebrew does is to place two forms of the word remember side by side, and that's a way of reinforcing and underlining it. You shall surely remember. That's another way to translate it. Remember the Exodus, says Moses, the amazing way God rescued you from slavery in Egypt and getting you across the Red Sea. All the power and might that God displayed by all the plagues and miracles that God performed in order to deliver you and make you his covenant people. We too need to remember what God has done in the past, the cross and the empty tomb the amazing rescue and deliverance that God performed for us by his might and power when he defeated the powers of sin and death and delivered us from the domain of darkness and transferred us to the kingdom of his beloved son. We are often much better at forgetting than we are at remembering. We need to have that word remember reinforced and underlined lest we forget. And that leads to the third thing that Moses has to say. Trust God for the future. Moses says here, remember what God has done in the past, all that he did to Pharaoh and to all Egypt, and therefore he concludes, so will the Lord your God do to all the peoples of whom you are afraid. Remembering God's works in the past fuels trust and confidence in God's continuing faithfulness in the future, despite the worries in the present. What was true for the people of Israel is true for us today. Paul assures the Philippians, and I am sure of this, that he who began a good work in you will bring it to completion at the day of Jesus Christ. What we have to do is to weigh our fears and concerns against God's faithfulness in the past and his assured faithfulness in the future. If he has rescued us by the death and resurrection of Jesus and has brought us into a personal relationship with himself, we can trust him to finish what he has started. And therefore, our concerns about those imagined enemies attacking our spiritual progress can be dismissed. They are simply obliterated by the overwhelming weight of God's faithfulness yesterday, today and tomorrow. When we weigh up our concerns and these great truths about God, there is no place for fear. You shall not be afraid of them, in Moses' words. As an old hymn puts it, his love in time past forbids me to think he'll leave me at last in trouble to sink. Let's confidently apply these verses in Deuteronomy chapter 7 verses 17 to 19 to ourselves and let's be encouraged.